In the year 2421, humanity had reached a milestone that had been dreamed of and depicted in countless stories and films throughout history. First contact with extraterrestrial civilizations. The Galactic Council, a prestigious and powerful coalition of dozens of advanced species from across the Milky Way, had extended an invitation to Earth. This was a gesture of peace and an offer to share knowledge and technology, marking Earth's official recognition in the galactic community. Captain Jameson Reed, a veteran astronaut renowned for his diplomatic acumen and command in several critical space missions, was chosen to lead the human delegation. His team comprised top scientists, engineers, cultural experts, and military advisors, selected for their expertise and ability to represent the best of humanity. The journey to the Council's headquarters was aboard the Odyssey, a state-of-the-art spacecraft equipped with the latest in human ingenuity. It featured an experimental engine capable of near-light-speed travel, designed specifically for this historic mission. As they approached the planet Xyleron, the location of the Galactic Council, the crew prepared for every possible scenario, practicing cultural protocols and reviewing the alien languages they might encounter. The Odyssey glided into orbit around Xyleron, a breathtaking world with swirling blue oceans and vast green continents, starkly different from the cold, dark space through which they had traveled. The ship was greeted by a fleet of council vessels, their designs varying wildly from sleek silver dart-like ships to larger, more intricate constructs that pulsed with bioluminescent colors. As they docked at the colossal star station orbiting Xyleron, the gravity of their mission weighed heavily on everyone's shoulders. They were not just explorers or diplomats. They were the first humans to step beyond the known and into a congress of star systems, each with its own customs, history, and intricacies. Captain Reed was the first to disembark, stepping onto the star station with a mix of awe and determination. The welcome was beyond what any of them had expected. Representatives of different species, some humanoid, others utterly alien, lined the Grand Hall. Their appearances varied drastically from beings covered in shimmering scales to those with ethereal translucent skin, each watching with eyes that reflected a universe of possibilities. The initial greetings were a cacophony of sounds and gestures, a test for the universal translators each delegate wore. Despite the technology, the air was filled with the subtle nuances of first encounters, the unspoken feelings of curiosity and slight apprehension. Captain Reed, with a calm yet commanding presence, began the formal introductions. He spoke of Earth, its history, its struggles, and its triumphs. He talked about humanity's desire for peace and mutual growth, and the hopes of establishing a meaningful and lasting relationship with the Galactic Council. What Reed and his team hadn't anticipated was the level of interest that would be sparked by the least assuming member of their delegation, a golden retriever named Buddy brought aboard the Odyssey for companionship and stress relief. As the formalities concluded and the delegates mingled, Buddy's friendly demeanor and wagging tail drew a small crowd of alien delegates. As the human delegates began to navigate the complex web of introductions and cultural exchanges with various alien species, Buddy, the golden retriever, wandered through the crowd, occasionally stopping to sniff an intriguing new scent or to accept a gentle pat from a tentacled limb or a feathered hand. His presence was a comforting reminder of home for the delegation, but soon became much more than that. It turned into an unforeseen bridge between the humans and their extraterrestrial hosts. The representatives of the Galactic Council were diverse, with each species bringing its own unique perspective and physiological appearance. Among them were the towering, crystalline forms of the silicoids, who communicated through subtle changes in their body's light patterns. The avialans, bird-like creatures with a keen interest in human music, and the aquatic Pisceans, whose delegates floated in hovering tanks filled with water, communicating via a translator that converted their bubbles into speech. Captain Reed, mindful of the historical significance of each interaction, facilitated exchanges between his crew and the aliens, highlighting human achievements in arts and sciences. Meanwhile, Dr. Lisa Moreno, the mission's lead xenobiologist, shared insights into Earth's biodiversity of which Buddy was now an unwitting example. Her presentation attracted a significant audience, keen on understanding the concepts of terrestrial life and, by extension, the peculiar relationship between humans and their animals. As the mingling continued, Buddy's affable nature made him the center of attention. His antics, chasing his tail, offering his paw for what might be seen as a handshake, 
drew laughter, and lightened the atmosphere. What started as mere amusement quickly turned into a series of inquiries from the council members about this creature's role in human society. Unbeknownst to the humans, the concept of a pet was foreign to many members of the council. In their interstellar cultures, all forms of life were often seen from a more utilitarian or equal standpoint, making the idea of keeping an animal for companionship both novel and fascinating. A particular moment of surprise came when a delegate from the Grun, a species known for their strict social structure and formal conduct, knelt to get a closer look at Buddy. This delegate, Ambassador Threx, was a prominent figure in the council, known for his seldom-seen smile. Threx's interaction with Buddy, however, was different. He seemed genuinely enchanted by the dog's friendly disposition, a reaction that resonated with his peers. As the session neared its end, an informal vote was suggested by one of the Avialans to designate Buddy as an honorary ambassador, a suggestion made in jest, but one that demonstrated the deep impression Buddy had made on the assembly. This lighthearted moment was captured and broadcast throughout the Council's channels, becoming a symbol of the day's success. Captain Reed, seeing the potential in this unexpected turn of events, decided to use Buddy's popularity as a stepping stone to foster deeper connections. He proposed a session for the next day, focused on human-animal relationships, hoping to weave this thread into the broader tapestry of diplomatic relations they were there to build. The next day, the human delegation prepared for what was now being humorously referred to as Buddy's Symposium. Captain Reed and his team worked overnight, adapting their planned presentations to include a special focus on human-pet relationships. Understanding that this theme had unexpectedly resonated with many of the council members, the symposium began with Dr. Moreno giving a detailed talk on the evolution of domestic animals on Earth, explaining how thousands of years of cohabitation had shaped both human and animal societies. She discussed the roles that animals played in human history, from labor and security to companionship and therapy, providing a comprehensive overview that fascinated the alien delegates. Following this, a live demonstration was set up, showcasing Buddy engaging in various activities fetching, obeying commands, and even performing some simple tricks that the crew had taught him for his own entertainment during the long journey. Each of these actions was explained by Captain Reed, who emphasized the mutual benefits of such relationships, highlighting the emotional bonds formed and the psychological comfort provided to humans. The demonstration took an unexpected turn when one of the council members, a representative from a species known as the Cerebrans, who were highly empathic, requested to attempt a direct emotional connection with Buddy. Using a device that could interpret and convey simple emotional states across species, the Cerebrin delegate connected with Buddy, experiencing firsthand the uncomplicated joy and loyalty of the dog. The room watched in quiet awe as the delegate, moved by the experience, shared their feelings with the assembly, praising the depth and purity of emotional connections among Earth creatures. This moment deepened the Council's interest and sparked a broader discussion about emotions and relationships across different species. Delegates from species that had evolved in communal or collective societies shared their experiences, drawing parallels and contrasts with the human-animal dynamic. The symposium had turned into a cross-cultural exchange, with Buddy at the center of a conversation much larger than anyone had anticipated. Encouraged by the day's success, Captain Reed proposed the idea of an interspecies exchange program, suggesting that just as humans learn from Buddy, there might be opportunities to learn from the fauna of other worlds in the Council. This proposal was met with enthusiasm, especially from the more scientifically inclined species, eager to explore psychological and sociological studies. The day concluded with a formal dinner where Buddy, now officially recognized as more than just a pet, was given a place of honor. The delegates celebrated the unexpected but invaluable contributions of the Earth Dog, with some even sharing humorous suggestions about the roles other Earth animals might play in galactic diplomacy. As the delegates mingled and discussed the day's revelations, Captain Reed and his team realized that what had started as a potential diplomatic faux pas had evolved into a significant diplomatic advantage. Buddy had not only charmed the Galactic Council, but had also provided a unique and memorable way to introduce the diverse and rich tapestry of life on Earth. The following morning, as the Council convened to discuss more formal matters of technology exchange and environmental conservation, the jovial atmosphere from Buddy's symposium still lingered. 
However, the lighthearted tone soon gave way to confusion and a touch of chaos, precipitated by a significant misinterpretation. During the session, an influential delegate from the Jork species, unfamiliar with the Earth concept of pets, and perhaps taking the previous day's humorous suggestions too literally, formally addressed Buddy during the assembly. The delegate proposed an alliance treaty with Earth, extending the offer directly to Buddy, whom they perceived as a key Earth representative, potentially due to his central role in the previous day's events. This misunderstanding unfolded rapidly, with the delegate's speech being broadcast throughout the chamber. The translator devices, designed to convert a myriad of alien languages into understandable speech, struggled momentarily to convey the seriousness with which the Jorks delegate presented the treaty to a dog. Captain Reed, realizing the mix-up, swiftly intervened. He approached the podium with a blend of urgency and diplomacy, explaining to the assembly that while Buddy was indeed a cherished member of the human delegation, he was not in a position to accept diplomatic treaties. Reed's explanation was careful to respect the Yorick's delegate's cultural perspectives, clarifying the human concept of a pet, and stressing the affectionate and non-political role animals like Buddy played in human society. The room filled with a mixture of reactions. Some delegates burst into laughter, realizing the absurdity of the situation, while others looked on in bewildered amusement. A few, however, appreciated the delicate position Reed found himself in, recognizing the potential for such misunderstandings in a gathering of vastly different cultures. To alleviate the tension and clarify any lingering doubts, Reed proposed an impromptu session on interspecies communication barriers, highlighting the need for a deeper understanding and more robust translation systems when dealing with such diverse members of the galaxy. This session turned out to be one of the most engaging discussions of the summit. Experts from various species shared their own experiences with miscommunication, and technologists proposed new ideas for improving translation devices, incorporating advanced AI to better handle nuances and cultural context. The incident, while initially embarrassing, proved to be a valuable learning opportunity for the Council. It underscored the importance of clarity in communication and the dangers of assumptions in intercultural interactions. By the end of the day, what began as a diplomatic faux pas had evolved into a constructive dialogue about improving understanding across the galaxy's many cultures. After the unexpected mishap with Buddy and the Jorks delegate, Captain Reed decided it was crucial to shift focus back to the primary objectives of the mission, sharing technological advances and fostering cultural understanding. To regain the momentum and to provide a clearer picture of Earth's society and capabilities, the human delegation organized a comprehensive demonstration of Earth's achievements in technology, arts, and culture. The demonstration was held in one of the larger auditoriums of the Council's headquarters, equipped with advanced holographic displays and sound systems that could accommodate the sensory preferences of various alien species. It started with a showcase of Earth's technological prowess, featuring virtual reality systems that allowed users to experience Earth's diverse environments, from the depths of the oceans to the peaks of the highest mountains. Engineers and scientists from the delegation explained the underlying technologies, emphasizing renewable energy sources, advances in medical technology, and breakthroughs in quantum computing. The presentation was designed not just to impress but also to offer real solutions for shared galactic challenges, such as resource scarcity and environmental degradation. Following the technology showcase, the cultural portion of the demonstration began. Musicians and artists performed a series of pieces that captured the essence of Earth's cultural diversity. There were classical orchestral performances, traditional dances from various countries, and modern visual art displays. Each performance was accompanied by subtitles in multiple languages, providing context about the cultural significance and history of each piece. Buddy, too, had his part to play in the cultural showcase. His segment was intended to further explain the human-animal bond, demonstrating obedience, agility, and training techniques. Captain Reed narrated the segment, sharing stories about the role of dogs in search and rescue operations, therapy, and as family members. This segment resonated deeply with many delegates, providing a practical and emotional illustration of humans' love for and interdependence with other species. The highlight of the demonstration, however, was an interactive segment where delegates were invited to engage directly with some of Earth's technologies and art forms. They could try their hands at virtual painting, participate in a dance lesson, 
or navigate a VR environment simulating Earth cities and natural landscapes. This hands-on approach allowed the delegates to experience Earth's culture more personally and fostered a deeper appreciation of human creativity and ingenuity. The demonstration concluded with a speech by Captain Reed, who emphasized the shared goals and common destiny of all intelligent species in the galaxy. He invited the council members to consider not only what they could teach humanity, but also what they could learn from Earth's experiences and innovations. As the delegates exited the auditorium, the atmosphere was one of excitement and renewed interest in Earth and its people. The successful demonstration had not only redeemed the delegation from the earlier miscommunication, but it also positioned Earth as a valuable and intriguing addition to the Galactic Council. The positive momentum from the cultural and technological demonstration carried over into the next days of the summit. The human delegation found themselves increasingly engaged in substantive discussions about potential collaborations and partnerships with various Galactic Council members. The atmosphere had transformed from one of mere curiosity about humanity to one of respect and a genuine desire to collaborate. One of the most significant sessions focused on environmental technology exchange. Earth's experience in battling climate change and developing sustainable technologies resonated with many council members, especially those from planets facing similar ecological challenges. The session was co-chaired by Dr. Moreno and a representative from the Telsan species, known for their advanced ecological engineering. Together, they outlined a proposal for an interstellar environmental coalition aimed at sharing knowledge, resources, and technologies to tackle planetary degradation. The proposal was met with enthusiastic approval, marking a significant victory for Earth's delegation and solidifying humanity's role as a proactive member of the galactic community. Another breakthrough occurred in the realm of educational exchange. The concept of Earth's universities and their diverse areas of study intrigued many delegates, leading to discussions about student and scholar exchange programs. The human delegation proposed the Earth Galactic Scholarship, which would fund students from other planets to study at Earth's leading institutions and vice versa. This initiative aimed to foster not only academic growth, but also intercultural understanding among the younger generations of the galaxy. As these discussions unfolded, Buddy continued to serve as an ambassador in his own right. His presence at various meetings, often lounging contentedly or playing gently with delegates, helped maintain a light-hearted and friendly atmosphere reminding everyone of the unexpected ways in which different species could connect. On the penultimate day of the summit, Captain Reed was invited to speak at the Grand Council session. Standing before the assembly, he delivered a powerful speech about unity, diversity, and the common future awaiting them all in the stars. He spoke of Earth's history, with its many challenges and triumphs, and how these experiences had taught humanity the value of cooperation and peace. Today, we stand at a crossroads not just for Earth, but for all civilizations seeking to make their way forward together in this galaxy, Captain Reed declared. Let us choose the path of shared knowledge, mutual respect, and combined strength. Let us build not just alliances, but a family among the stars. The speech was met with widespread acclaim and marked a turning point in the summit. The final agreements drafted and signed the next day were comprehensive and ambitious, covering areas from technology and environmental management to cultural exchanges and joint exploratory missions. As the summit drew to a close, the human delegation was praised for their contributions and the insightful perspectives they had brought to the table. The misunderstandings and humorous incidents of the initial days had evolved into anecdotes that exemplified the potential for growth and understanding across vastly different cultures. Captain Reed and his team left the council headquarters with a sense of accomplishment and optimism for the future. They had not only represented Earth well, but had also laid the groundwork for a lasting integration into the Galactic Council, promising a bright future for human involvement in interstellar affairs. As the summit approached its conclusion, the final days were dedicated to formalizing the agreements that had been discussed throughout the productive sessions. The human delegation, led by Captain Reed, worked closely with representatives from various species to draft treaties that would ensure cooperation and mutual benefit. The primary treaty was a monumental document, signifying Earth's formal entry into the Galactic Council. It encompassed agreements on technological exchange, particularly in renewable energy and medical sciences, and established guidelines for an interstellar environmental initiative. Another significant section of the treaty outlined the terms for cultural exchanges, 
including the proposed student and scholar programs, which had been warmly received. There was also a special section acknowledging the unique contributions of Earth's fauna, inspired by Buddy's unexpected role in the summit. This clause proposed the establishment of a galactic wildlife conservation program aimed at protecting endangered species across different planets and promoting biodiversity. As the treaties were signed in a grand ceremony, each delegate used their unique methods to endorse the documents, from ink-like secretions to bioluminescent stamps, showcasing the diversity of life forms within the Council. Captain Reed signed on behalf of Earth with a traditional pen, symbolizing humanity's entry into this new chapter of galactic partnership. The closing ceremony was both solemn and celebratory. Speeches were made by various leaders, including Captain Reed, who thanked the Council for their openness and hospitality. Today, we are not just partners, we are family, he stated, echoing the sentiments of his earlier speech and emphasizing the unity that had been forged. Following the formalities, the Council hosted a grand farewell banquet in honor of the new ties with Earth. The event was a lavish affair, with culinary delicacies from across the galaxy that offered the human delegates tastes and experiences far beyond the familiar. Music and dance from different worlds filled the hall, and the delegates mingled, sharing stories and laughter. During the banquet, Buddy was given a place of honor, complete with a special meal prepared to suit his dietary needs. His presence at the table served as a reminder of the serendipitous events that had helped cement the bonds between Earth and the council members. Many delegates took turns petting him, and some even shared images and tales of their own planetary creatures, sparking ideas for future cultural and biological exchanges. As the evening drew to a close, the delegates exchanged contact information and promises to visit each other's worlds. Captain Reed and his team felt a profound sense of accomplishment and anticipation for the future. They had come to the summit hoping to introduce Earth to the galactic community, but they left with much more. New friendships, profound agreements, and promising prospects for future collaboration. Captain Jameson Reed and his crew had time to reflect on the extraordinary events of the summit. The ship was quiet, a stark contrast to the bustling activity and constant interactions of the past weeks. The crew members, though exhausted, were animated in their discussions about the future and the impact of their mission. In the quiet of the ship's observation deck, Captain Reed reviewed the agreements and commitments made at the summit. He pondered the responsibilities that now rested on humanity's shoulders. Earth was no longer an isolated planet, but a member of a vast and diverse interstellar community. This new role brought opportunities, but also challenges that would need careful navigation. Dr. Lisa Moreno, the lead xenobiologist, was particularly excited about the Environmental Coalition. She spent much of the journey organizing the data and research shared during the summit, planning how best to integrate these new resources with Earth's existing efforts to combat environmental degradation. The cultural exchange program was another topic of much discussion among the crew. The potential influx of alien students to Earth's universities and vice versa promised a richer, more diverse academic environment. The crew brainstormed how they might facilitate these exchanges and prepare Earth's institutions for their new students. Buddy, the golden retriever who had unexpectedly become a star of the summit, seemed unaware of his fame. He spent his days on the journey back as he had on the way there, napping, playing, and occasionally offering a comforting presence to the crew members who missed their families and home. The Odyssey touched down amidst a flurry of media coverage and public excitement. Humanity was eager to hear about the summit and the new role Earth would play in the Galactic Council. Buddy was the first to disembark, leading the way down the ramp with a wagging tail, followed by Captain Reed and the rest of the crew. The homecoming was celebrated worldwide. Broadcasts of the landing were played on screens in city squares, homes, and devices across the globe. Schools organized sessions for students to watch and discuss the implications of the summit while universities began to prepare for the arrival of their first interstellar students. Captain Reed was hailed as a hero, not only for his leadership during the summit, but for his vision of a united galactic community. Dr. Moreno and the other crew members were also recognized for their contributions, each becoming ambassadors for their respective fields. Buddy, too, received his share of fame. The story of how a dog had unwittingly become a diplomatic sensation was retold with laughter and amazement. It served as a reminder of the unpredictable nature of first contacts and the simple truths that can bridge even the vastest of cultural divides.